Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another Easter review. If you're new here to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army. So let's get right into it. Now, the first thing I gotta say, last week's episode, we actually got to see Yuno and Soldier again, and I was really happy. And people are happy about it as well because even though we haven't seen them in so long, we are still very excited when we see them. And Soldier in this series is still my favorite character of the series, right? Now. The thing is, in this episode, we get to see Sojiro versus Shulk. And I'm not taking anything away from Shulk. Shulk is an undead skeleton. Very powerful. Uses a spear. Now we see their weapon of choice, which is cool. And they're so fast that Sojiro cannot keep up with Shulk just by looking at him through his eyes. So he actually has to predict attacks. Which is even more impressive in Sojiro's part. Because in the heat of battle, in a high speed battle, he still has to predict the spear strikes and stuff. Which is which is cool. And not using his eyes to really... Well, he's still using his eyes, but he's not like really paying attention that much because his eyes can't keep up. And he's using his body in all sorts of ways to dodge attacks. And he's still getting slashed here and there. But they're not critical uh, slashes they're not fatal slashes and stuff but it's a high speed battle very tough battle for soldier so far we have seen in the series this is his selfless battle yet and even shock says okay this is going to be bone breaking so he actually makes a joke saying okay this is not going to be an easy battle and i like that i like that that soldier no soldier is not having an easy battle but then towards the end they say, oh, there was no survivors with the Auratia guards that got sent to do the little patrol for outlaws and stuff. No survivors. And then they're saying that Soldier of the Hollow is dead, which I do not believe that at all. Why? Because if you know has plot armor, Soldier needs to have plot armor. Because Higuare literally killed all the Auratia soldiers besides Juno because it was stated that actually Juno was kept alive because she was the weakest. But we know that's not really the reason. It's because of the plot armor. Because you know it's one of the main characters. And the thing is, it doesn't matter how strong the soldiers were regardless. Because Higuare is broken. <laughs> Higuare, all those soldiers were weaker than him, right? Besides, well, Soldier Or is not really a soldier. Soldier. And Shulk actually says, you cannot keep up with the swordsmanship of Soldier Or. So Sojiro versus Higuare, Sojiro probably will have taken the W. Now, this is very interesting, though. Higuare wields 49 blades. And Sojiro might outspeed Higuare, which is good, because then he could kill him. However, if one of those blades just slashes Sojiro once, even if it's not a fatal, he's dead. Because all of those blades contain a poison that when it hits you... It, 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 it could grace you. You're dead. Because it just poisons your entire body at a rapid rate. And the poison acts instant instantaneously. So I will still give the W to Sojuro against Higuare. But uh, against Shulk, I don't really know who won. Because they there's no mention of them seeing bones on the battlefield of Shulk or anything like that. They say that nobody survived. And I definitely do think that Soldier will survive. Now, did he win the battle against Shulk? I do not know. The battle was not really... It it was not really in his favor because Soldier will actually maintain minor injuries, minor wounds, not heavy injuries, like minor wounds here and there, scratches here and there from Shulk's spear, while Soldier will inflicted no damage at all because Shulk is an undead. Which doesn't mean that he cannot die. It just means it's just harder to cause damage, injury, because he's made of bones. And, like, the sword slashes are missing because there's no skin there. But Soldier definitely will, can break the bones, right, with his sword. If he could break that giant golem thing, that giant robotic thing, then he definitely could break the, the bones and stuff. So, interesting battle. I enjoy the battle because it gave Soldier more of a challenge. And we do not know who the true winner is. Throughout all of this ordeal, this is the start of Tyrant the Guarded actually declaring war on Aurasia. So she could not wait anymore. So she's like, boom, okay, war is going to happen. This was the first strike because if anything happened to these soldiers, that 
basically means war is officially declared, right? And these soldiers are from uh, this mage city, which is partnered with Aurasia. And <laughs> the, the mage city is just like, okay, Aurasia will come help us out. While their city is also getting bombarded, um, which I'm not going to lie, I, I, I kind of felt bad for them. So their city is getting bombarded, and the the guy, one of the generals of our race, is just like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get support. And he finds like, okay, okay that, that, that's it. I'm, I'm just going to send out somebody I did not want to send out, which is Nihilo. And Nihilo, all Nihilo wants is to be a, a, a citizen of our race, to go to school. And there was one more thing. Let me go back in, in the episode. But Nihilo is literally like a, a monster. They just call her a monster. So let me go back in the episode. He said that Sojuro the Hollow was killed, which I still don't think that's true. So what the general says is, you must destroy Lydia. And, and Nihilo smiles. Because we do know that Nihilo took down an entire Aurasia army by mm -hmm. herself with this golem. This, and now we see the golem fully. It's a spider golem. And she pilots it like a Gundam. And so, it, okay, I'm not gonna lie. When she got it in, in the uh, the golem bit, uh, buck naked, started moaning. I was like, okay, what, what's going on here? Now? Is, is this the fan service uh, part of the series? If you win the war, you'll grant my request, won't you? Equal rights with the minion races and official citizenship of Aurasia, plus she wants to go to school. So that's very interesting. Even though Nihilo is basically a living weapon, uh, she wants people to recognize her as a minion city citizen still. She does not want to be seen as a weapon because at the end of the day, she is a human being. She probably was ultra tested many times to, I guess, become the ultimate weapon. And this is the general's uh, counter to the wyverns, which is interesting because you would think a spider golem, she's piling the spider golem to its full potential. How is this thing going to take down the wyvern and start flying the air? Maybe could shoot lasers or something. Who knows? We will see hopefully next week's episode. And yeah, that was the episode in a nutshell. I really did enjoy it. Also, the general, I believe he called himself the I think like the 12th general. It is so many. It's, it's so many. And like any enemy that possesses three. He's the sixth general. So the sixth general. Gave, gave the commands and stuff like that. And he also sends Kuze. Through all, all of this, and his city getting destroyed, he's literally like, oh, um, we, we should send another assassination. Like, like, there's no time for assassination plots. That's it. The war has started. Taran has started the war. And Taran was... The only reason Taran literally... They didn't let Taran just rule the deal by herself or ratio is because that wyvern army, it just poses too much of a threat to the minion forces, where the minion forces are basically, the, you could say the human forces in the series, and then the visitors are people not from those lands, from way, uh, the other part of the world, you could say. So, the Aurasia kingdom versus Lithia, and then we have the elf girl with the, the world word as well. So a lot of in a lot of different things happening all at the same time. And then we have the Star Runner really upset that something got stolen from a dungeon that he wanted to get first. So he's not gonna be quiet about that. And then we also have the, the guy that 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 general that captain or general, whatever his title is, who, who fought the dragon, couldn't do Jack Squad to the dragon, couldn't do anything to the dragon, so the Star Runner had to save him and he was really upset about that. And now he's like, no. Okay, if I can't send out my soldiers, can I send out no soldiers against these wyverns? I'm going to go out there myself and take care of them. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm assuming this guy's going to die, unless Star Runner saves him, because that's, like, I guess his childhood friend and stuff. But, yeah, overall, this was a good episode. I enjoyed it. And, oh, yeah, before I end it, you know, once with Lithia, because she was forced by Higuare, because if she did not comply and ride that horse, then she would have got stabbed and got poisoned and died. But... Like I said before, you know, has plot armor. She has to have plot armor. Um, yeah, so overall, giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Peace.